Uh, one would have thought that uh, continuity would have uh, been abridged uh, with your administration, but we saw uh, the tradition already created. Now, year in, year out, we're talking about that particular cannibal. Yeah. No, it was, it was clear for us. Um, I think we had the good fortune of working together as a young team. Um, my predecessor, Donald, and, and I, um, and a few others who worked together on a blueprint for Cross River State long before the elections in 1998. Um, so for us, it was natural that we would just continue. You know what I mean? And I think that has made a tremendous difference for us in Cross River State and indeed in our economy. Our policies are not different from the policies of my predecessor and projects that were not completed, you know what I mean, by the previous administration, the first thing we did was to complete them and create value um, for them. Um, and if we can sustain that, you know what I mean, then you'd have uh, real growth, stability, and investment coming in. Uh, today I, see, we have I, I see, sorry, I see preparedness in that. Uh, so it uh, looks uh, to me that uh, if we're not too careful, uh, or rather for others to learn from that particular example so that they don't have unprepared leaders in future. Uh, perhaps such a blueprint is something that people can actually export. If we have to go into all of that, uh, have your administration been able to get more people into that kind of idea, mindset, so that uh, we don't wake up someday, you have an unprepared leader that will take over from your, your administration? Yeah, I think that's a very good question, and I think it's important where to understand and appreciate the need for us to be able to understand that people who seek for public office must be challenged, you know what I mean, on, on what exactly it is that they, how prepared they are, and how much time they've taken to even understand the state. You know, for us, um, because I had been in the Senate previously, and Donald had been Commissioner for Finance previously, you know, we could put together um, something, you know what I mean, um, um, uh, and, and I think that's very, very important. We must understand our economy, we must understand our GDPs, areas of comparative advantage, uh, man, manpower, resource availability, and then, you know, focus on those key areas that are people-driven. One of the great challenges we have is that we seem to be more infrastructure-driven. We get a lot of credit for the infrastructure. We don't get any credit uh, or as much credit for the value that we create out of that infrastructure. Mm. Um, and that, that's a challenge for us in governance. Yeah. You know, um, you know, and, and we need to address things like that. So yes, uh, succession becomes very important. Um, who takes over must be part of that whole process and understand how we got to where we got to. Imagine know, the next person is around the corner. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Another year, another <laughs> year and, uh, and, 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 uh, and five months or so, something thereabouts. Okay. Let yes. me talk about agriculture a little bit because you, you mentioned it in passing. Yeah. Uh, wh what's the policy? Because I do know the last time the Nigeria Economic Summit Group held yeah. that meeting, one thing that stuck out was the Land Use Act. Yeah. Now, a lot of people have talked about it. There's massive land in Cross River State here. What's the policy? How about the Land Use Act? Is it going to affect state government's policy to encourage farmers to come in? Well, not, we haven't had that experience. Um, the Land Use Act has not restricted investment in agriculture in, agriculture in Cross River State. So access to land is not an issue? Access to land is not an issue in Cross oh. River. Um, mm -hmm. In fact, what we're looking for is more land. <laughs> um, you know, um, because, you know, uh, a lot of people don't realize it. Uh, there's seemingly a lot of land. But, but we have one million hectares of, of pristine tropical high rainforest. Um, mm -hmm. And it's the last of the remaining rainforest in Nigeria. Mm. It is also, we also have 60% of the forest cover in Nigeria, in Cross River State. It's, um, it's one of the 25 biodiversity hotspots in the world uh, because of the species of fauna and, and, um, and, and various wonderful things in that forest. Mm. So for <laughs> us, as a matter of policy, 
Uh, we're very strong on protection of the forest. Uh, you're also looking to preserve that. Yes, uh, yes. You yes, don't yes. need to have on trade in any time. We're sorry. doing <laughs> that. We're working with the UN. We're, we're the only UN red state in Nigeria, in fact, in this part of the world. Interesting. Yes. So, so we've been working on conserving uh, that. Uh, let's yeah. talk a little bit about regional development. I mean, I think you have been lucky in terms of environment. You have been blessed. Yeah. But looking at regional development, I think the last time we had you on the show was during the South South Summit. That's correct. Uh, yes. We don't know when the next summit will hold. Next year. Next, next year. Yeah. Oh, uh, interesting. Really? So that's, that's a great yeah. up well, heads well, up well, you're giving us there. But yeah. In March, I believe. Next time, yeah. Yeah. What do you think that regions can do? I mean, you've talked about how most of the things that could actually aid development are owned by the federal government. Mm. Uh, what do you think that regions can do together in such a way that they're not really hampered by the constraints of the constitution as it presently is? Well, uh, I think that um, regions uh, must be able to understand that there are areas of comparative advantage that um, our states, you know what I mean, um, we can't all do tourism in the same manner, mm -hmm. you know what I mean, so if we agree that, for instance, Cross River State is going to do tourism, then we don't need to compete in tourism. Uh, if we agree that uh, certain states have advantage in oil and gas and in other services, then we focus on that. But the key thing for us is, is creating uh, the necessary infrastructure to link um, the region uh, and make sure that everyone has access to these services. So if Cross River is doing tourism, you know, can River State have access to, to, to Cross River? Do you think that people will be able to rise above the divisions you know, in politics, currently in the South South, you know, uh, governors forum. Uh, uh, yes, uh, as governors, we've um, we've worked and insisted that we continue to meet, even though we have some political differences that are obvious. You know what I mean? So, okay. for us as a people and as governors, it's imperative that we rise above the politics. You know, in trying to deliver uh, that vision. Let me bring in this before we wrap up. Uh, I was looking at the 2014 budget which you presented to the State House of Assembly, therein... You've been you doing a lot of research. In <laughs> 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 well, there was uh, a budget of about uh, $176 billion yes. about that. And then you said that there's 70% capital expenditure, <laughs> that's huge, and 30% recurring to expenditure. Yeah. You intend to raise $30 billion now from internal sources. But in 2012, the IGR was 12 billion, yes. and I think Dr. Peter also said they've not, you've not been able to meet the targets of your IGR since 2008. So, yeah, how do you intend to get 30 billion? For us, um, we, through the years, in, 2000 and, uh, in 2012, it was 12 billion. In 2008, it was 2.4 billion. So, you, you have to understand where we're coming from. Uh, and so we understand that 30 billion is actually achievable. Um, and, and you're seeing that happening. There's a lot of people coming in. There's investment in our economy. That was not there in 2008. GE is in Cross River. Several other investors, Wilma, PZ Cousins, you understand. So we're seeing wealth being created, opportunity being created. And the state understands that that is opportunity for generating revenue internally to taxes, levies, and so on. So for us, um, 30 billion is what Lagos State earns in less than, uh, less than a month. So uh, to be able to achieve that in a year is a target that we've set for ourselves. We've restructured um, our laws, and Peter Oti, like you mentioned, is the new <laughs> chief executive of the Internal Revenue Service with, with a commitment to achieve those targets. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, His Excellency, Leah Lemoke, Governor of Cross River State, thank you for coming out today. Thank you for having me, and I hope you enjoy your stay in uh, Tinapa, you enjoy the festival, and yeah. uh, you come and back again. And we have more plans. Yes, very good. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. <All> right. <laughs>